Well, good afternoon, everyone. Great to have you here. We are really thankful that you took time to come be a part of our graduation baccalaureate service. Um, we know that uh, quite a few of you had to drive a good distance to get here, and we're thankful that you took the time to come be a part. It's, it's a big day for these guys. You know, nine months of um, a lot of hard work has gone into getting to this point that they're at uh, right now. And I, I want to take just a few minutes. We're going to have a couple of songs of worship here in just a moment, but I want to take just a couple of minutes to thank some people that are uh, really important to us that we want to make sure that we thank. And first of all, I, I would just want to thank each one of you for being here. And, and I know I said that before, but you know, you, you can't do what we're doing without people about com, you know, committed people being involved, standing behind the vision of what we're doing here at Applied Life. And so we thank you for being here. And you know, this is a really critical moment in history, probably even more so now than it was in 1985 when Tim and Terry started Applied Life and really seeing the need for direction for young adults and a grounding for young adults. Um, but boy, I mean, more so than ever, what we're doing here is necessary. What we're doing in the hearts of young adults here is absolutely necessary because the world is so hypnotizing. There's just so much out there that young people can get so um, caught up in and get off the track of the direction that God intended them to walk in, and that's why we do what we do. I want to thank our church family. You know, there's just no possible way that, you know, we could have Leaders Academy without our church family and our church members being involved and supporting the vision of what we're doing here at Applied Life. There's just no way that I can thank you enough. And um, our host home families, wow, you guys are one of the highlights of our intern's time here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have host families, and these are our core people in our church, and they host an intern, and it's kind of like a home away from home. You know, you can get a fresh meal, something other than frozen pizza and ramen noodles, um, you know, maybe get some laundry done, hang out a little bit, get away from the dorms, and um, our host families just provide all kinds of opportunities for them to, to work, to make money, to go out to eat, um, just to connect, just to, to do life with them, to mentor them. Um, you know, I hear so many stories from our host families being involved with our young adults and just things that they're continuing to uh, reinforce in their lives and be friends in their lives and invest in them. So I want to thank our host families just it's hard for me to put into words how thankful I am to you for your involvement in their life. It means so much to us. Um, I want to thank the ones that have sowed financially into Applied Life. You know, we, we um, are not funded by the government or receive any kind of financial aid whatsoever. And, you know, we've worked really, really hard to keep the tuition down here. As a matter of fact, we haven't raised our tuition in many, 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 many years. And um, we have supporters that see, you know, I hear people say, wow, Paul, how do y'all do that for that amount of money? How do you do that? Well, we don't. You don't because the, the tuition doesn't even touch what it costs to uh, turn on the electricity and all the buildings and pay all the teacher salaries and do what we do here, but we have people who have a vision for what we're doing and they sow and we want to thank you for sowing into that. Um, I, I mean, I don't even know how to thank our staff. We have the best staff in the world. I mean, the best leaders that you could get anywhere. And I'm so thankful to all of our staff who work full time and on a volunteer basis with us in the Ministry of Applied Life. It, we have lots of teachers that are involved, and I think that's one thing that makes Leaders Academy so special is our student-to-teacher ratio that we have. And so we have really a lot of people and a lot of personalities that are involved in helping to develop 
the young adults that come through here. And I just, I love our staff. They're the best people in the world and they have a real vision for what they're doing. And they love the interns. They love them. They literally treat them like they are their own children and, and take time to invest in their lives. So I'm so thankful to our staff. And I, I want to appreciate Jim and Susan Birmingham for coming on this year with us. For those of you who don't know, Jim and uh, Susan have partnered with us this year. They moved here from California about three years ago and, um, you know, moved into the village. And, and most people who are more mature in their phase of life, how's that? Is that pretty good, Jim? <laughs> I use that more and more often as I get a little bit older and older and older. But, you know, usually people in their situation would go into Hot Springs Village and play golf and retire and just have a relaxed life. But that wasn't Jim and Susan. It was really interesting when they, um, the way they found out about us is we were having a graduation and they thought that it was our Christian Ministries Academy, our K-4 through 12th grade graduation. And um, they ended up coming to an applied life graduation. And as they were sitting in those seats watching what was happening, they said, this is 100% us and we have to get involved. As a matter of fact, they had a book club before they came here with a bunch of young women. And for many, many years, they have trained and raised up young women. Now they're older, married, have families of their own. And they've even started a book club since they've been here and probably have eight to 10 young women uh, that are in that now. But I'm so grateful to Jim and Susan for partnering with us. They teach classes on a volunteer basis. They mentor one-on-one. -on -one. They have them in their home. <clears throat> spent countless amounts of money because it takes a lot of money to, to, to feed these hungry people. They eat a lot. So we're just so grateful to you guys. Thank you so much for partnering with us. We're grateful to you. Look, looking forward to many more years of doing this together. And uh, last but certainly not least, I want to uh, thank our very own homegrown Colton Jeans for being our RA. <laughs> yep. Colton, where are you at? Where's Colton at? He's in the back. He's working. Colton's back working, but Colton grew up here in our ministry, and um, this is the first year that I've ever had a guy RA in our dorms. I've just never done that before for different reasons, and uh, Colton and I had some long talks and conversations, and um, he, I, you know, I've known him since he was born. He's been involved in, in our family ever since he came into the world. And man, I'm telling you, you won't find a better guy anywhere. He is just a solid, awesome man of God. And, and I'm so grateful that at night, you know, I don't have to worry about the dorms. Colton's got it handled. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to, okay, or, or, you know, are they swinging from the chandeliers up there? You know, what, what's going on? Colton, it's got, and if you were, don't say anything about it. Y'all just keep it to yourself. I don't want to know. Just keep it to yourself. But Colton, we're so grateful to you. I know the interns bragged on Colton all year long of just the great job uh, that he did. So we're so grateful to Colton for his job that he did this year. Well, this is a, uh, what we call a baccalaureate graduation service. M most people are very familiar with um, graduations, but maybe you're not so familiar with a baccalaureate service. Um, Tim and Terry, when they started Applied Life in 1985, uh, were answering the call that God had on their life to make an opportunity for young adults to come to a place where they can be biblically rooted and grounded, but then also receive practical hands-on training at how to just be successful and victorious in life. And so they began um, in 1985, and 37 years later, we're still going strong, and even more so than ever, we would believe in, in what is happening here. And so this is a baccalaureate graduation service. And a, and a baccalaureate service traditionally has been a service where gratitude is given to God for the, the young person completing the course studies that they were required to complete 
and then arrive at a place of graduation. So we've gathered here to celebrate what all of these young adults have accomplished, and it's been a lot over the last nine months, a whole lot, and to give God thanks for him enabling them and helping them arrive at this point. And so baccalaureate service, and this, this goes way, way back with colleges, but it's just basically a worship service where we give God glory and we give God thanks for his help in enabling us to arrive at the point that we're at. And so we're gonna do just that. We're gonna enter into a time of worship. These are the interns that were in our worship track this year. We have different tracks in our internship that uh, the interns get involved in, and that's the hands-on part or the internship part of what we do. So this is the worship track, and these guys have led us in worship. They've actually uh, led our church in worship. They do a fantastic job. So we're gonna enter into a time of worship here, and I would just ask you to stand with us, and I'm gonna open us up in prayer. Let's pray together. Father, we are so thankful for you. We just ask for your Holy Spirit to be here with us during this time. It's such an important time to solidify all that has happened in these nine months. So Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory as we lift you up today. In Jesus' name, amen.
deserve the glory You are worthy of it all You are worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory
Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you for this moment, Lord. May you receive all the glory, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Great job. Let's give our guys a round of applause. Man, so good. If our interns want to begin to make their way to the stage, you guys can begin to come up. As they're coming up, I want to just kind of set up this next moment. So this is a um, real exciting moment for our interns because it's a moment for them to get to share with you and give God thanks for their time here at Leaders Academy. And it's, it's really an emotional moment for them because these guys have been immersed for nine months, and I'm talking nine months of just intense, intense being involved in so many different things. They have sat through literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of classroom teaching, literally. They have been here in our church and heard me and Tim and Josh and Chloe and so, and so many other people minister the word right here uh, in our church. They've served in our church. They are involved in so many different facets of our ministry. Every Sunday, they are involved here. They've been involved in a lot of different conferences and seminars and youth events and kids events. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing what all has happened. The dorm life, the experiences that they've had, the time that they spent with their host families, the list goes on and on. It's just been an incredible nine months that they've had. And, you know, we feel it's important to take time to let each intern express their gratitude to the Lord and to some key people who have made their opportunity uh, possible for them today. So I'm going to turn it over to the interns, and they're going to come and share with you. Let's give them a round of applause. Hi, um, my name is Danielle. Out of the way, not working. Is the mic turned on? Okay, it's, it's on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Danielle Attaway. I'm an intern at Leaders Academy. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I did not ask to be first. So, uh, thank you, Paul, and to my parents for making my last name start with an A. <laughs> Paul, since I'm talking about you, I thank you for your mentorship in my life. I came here very broken and lost, and I appreciate the fact you constantly wanted to and was willing to pour into my life. I am so thankful that you're a solid man of God and a father-like figure in my life. I want to thank my track leader, Lucas, for being so patient and caring to me and the worship track. I'm honored that I had the absolute privilege of working under an absolute rock star. <laughs> Um, I'm so blessed I got to learn how to lead people into the presence of God and thank you for teaching me what it means to be a true worshiper to serve others and pour out everything to the feet of Jesus I thank you again I want to thank my host parents Sandy Nathan and Caden Robinson for blessing me and opening up their home to me and constantly pouring into me I thank you for the really really good food I received and the awesome talks backstage with Sandy I love you guys so much I want to thank the Birmingham's for completely teaching all eight of us 18 of us night, I'm sorry. <laughs> All 18 of us to communicate to each other correctly. I truly believe that the reason we did not tear each other apart is because of your class and the Holy Spirit speaking through us. <laughs> thank you so much. Josh, thank you. Thank you for seeing me at High Point and seeing my heart and what I could be before I ever did. <laughs> I'm so blessed to look up to someone that truly loves God and is so sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I want to thank His House Ministries, Christy and Jeremy Johnson, and Laney and Ryan Davis of supporting me financially and for my food and tuition. 
I love you guys so much for pouring into me and constantly blessing me. Lastly, I want to thank this community, CMC Church, Miss Hetty, and Tim and Terry Brooks. Y'all have shown me what a body of Christ is truly like. Thank you guys for loving us as we are and opening up your homes and families to us. Leaders Academy has seriously changed me for the better in ways I never expected, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and mentally. The hours-long worship sets, the chaotic kitchen fights, the movie marathons in the student center are moments in my life I will forever cherish. I want to thank God for continually revealing things in my life, for being so good to me and faithful. You are so worthy of all of our praise. I am so excited to announce that I am pursuing a second year, and thank you. Uh, and thank you, Angela Hickson, for graciously opening up her home to me for, during the summer. Thank you all for coming. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming out today. My name is Dante Barnes. I came into Leaders Academy with ignorance on what it means to live an abundant life. I was insecure, scared of people, unsure on how to lead a family, and confused on what the purpose of life really is. Growing up, I knew God had a great call in my life, and I've always dreamed great things for his kingdom. But here at Leaders Academy, I learned that the greatest dream wasn't that I could one day preach in front of thousands of people. I found that my greatest dream, my greatest possession was my relationship with my Father in Heaven, who looks at me not as a sinful, wretched person, but as this beautiful child who he put thought into when he formed me in my mother's womb. It is through that affirmation that I can't help but spread the love of Jesus everywhere to everyone. It is through that affirmation that I want to please him and do right, not out of obligation, but out of my love for him. It is by the grace of God that those labels of insecurity do not define me any longer. And I can stand before you and pledge that I will lead as a strong man amidst this dark and evil world. I will lead a family that loves the Lord with all their heart. I will always stand up for absolute truth of the Bible, and I will live my every last dying breath for the glory of my Father. All glory, honor, and praise be to God for bringing me here and for growing me more than I could ever imagined. Thank you, Pastor Tim and Terry, for obeying the call of God to start Leaders Academy. When we sit here and look at y'all's life, we are witnesses of what it looks like to bear fruit and fruit that lasts. Paul and Angela, your faithfulness and endurance to love and serve people all these years is an inspiration to everyone. It is through y'all that I have learned to live a life of perseverance and grit, but also to be gentle, patient, and kind. Thank you, Josh and Sarah, for showing me what it means to love the Lord with all my heart, soul, and strength, and for teaching me to serve him with passion and humility. To my host parents, David and Kim, Thank you for being a biblical example of what it looks like to live a godly Christian life, a godly home, and a godly workplace. I will forever be grateful for all the times y'all fed me, mentored me, and took me under your wing, and treated me as your own son. Thank you, Jim and Susan Birmingham, for teaching me how to treat people and communicate effectively. I say this with all honesty. I want to be like y'all when I grow up. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for raising me in the church and for interceding on my behalf all these years. It is because of y'all's faithfulness to God that I am here today. And lastly, I want to thank all of CMC for your love and support these last nine months. I am truly beyond grateful to all of you. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Noah Karskadden. I am originally from Shreveport, Louisiana, and I would like to start with something that God put on my heart uh, since the beginning of this year, and that would be uh, in chapter John 15, where it tells us to love others as Jesus loved us, and I did struggle with this for a while in the beginning of the year, but <laughs> constantly, <laughs> the Lord was challenging me with situations where I just had to die to myself and put others before me. And I finally realized that 
putting others before yourself is just so much more fulfilling than having a selfish mindset. So, But now I'd like to thank Paul, Josh, and Lucas for all the hours of teaching that we put them through. <laughs> Even outside of classes with the meetings, the, um, the questions of advice, and even the occasional theological debates. God bless you, Josh. <laughs> These men have really taught me how to be a true man of God, and everything that you have poured into our lives means more than you know. Lucas, thank you for being so direct and hard on me within the first month. You made me real. <laughs> you made me realize that I needed to commit to growth. Um, you taught me to humble myself, and you showed me that I didn't always have to be right. But when I was, I didn't always have to prove it. <laughs> I don't always show it, Lucas, but I look up to you. Thank you. And Colton Jeans, dude, you did a, such an amazing job as your first year being RA. And Colton has been able to see me grow up through the years because of a high point. And honestly, I look up to him. He's been a leader, like, all throughout my teenage years. I couldn't have asked of a better person to be our RA. I also want to thank my host home, Jim and Susan Birmingham, for taking in Rhett and I this year for all the meals, the boat rides, and the amazing words of advice. Um, all of it was truly a blessing. And to the people who supported me financially, uh, to Christian Center Shreveport Church that helped fundraise money for my tuition, and to my mom and dad who always made sure I had food in front of me no matter what. I love you all. Thank you. Uh, now. Last, but of course not least, I just thank the Lord for calling me here and having his hand on my shoulder throughout this whole process. It's now that I look back on these nine months that I realized how much the Lord really did and how much he actually moved in my life. You don't really notice it in the moment, but when you look back, you can really say that that was truly only God that could have done that. But now, as I end, I would like to leave you with some scripture that I feel accurately described in my experience through applied life, and that just happens to be from John 15, verses 1 through 4. I am the true grapevine, and my, ma my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bergen Colley. I'm originally from Wimberley, Texas, um, and the Lord called me to move here last April. A few months after he called me to move here, he told me that I was supposed to go to Leaders Academy, which I was not expecting, <laughs> nor did I necessarily want to at the time. But um, looking back, I can't express through words how much the Lord has done through this time and how impactful it's been this, this nine months. He has used this year and the last nine months to just be the most incredible time of my life. Um, he's blessed me with community that I prayed for long before he called me to be here. And he's blessed me with friends who have challenged me and pushed me and mentors who have loved me enough to show me how to be better than I am. Um, I'm just so grateful, so grateful to the Lord for everything that he's done in this time, so grateful for the people he's blessed me with. and. Um, I don't have the words to express what a blessing this whole program has been for me. The last year has been the most impactful, um, changing year of my life. I have grown more than I can even say, <laughs> and um, in every way, just every little thing, the Lord has pushed me in and grown me. Um, he has shown me how to love like Him. He's shown me His character to a whole new degree. And he's used his people to show me what it looks like to live in his kingdom. I want to thank Miss Hetty Lou Brooks for starting this church and for um, following the vision that the Lord put on her heart. And same for Tim and Terry Brooks for following the vision for Leaders Academy. I'm so thankful that you chose to follow what the Lord asked you to do because I get to bear the fruit of that and I get to be blessed by your obedience. So I'm thankful, and thank you for helping me not be homeless when I first got here. 
Um, thank you for taking me in and welcoming me. Um, thank you to Paul and Angela Kern. You um, have been the most incredible host family. I am just, I remember Paul when you said that I was your host kid and I was so excited because <laughs> I was like, I love that guy. <laughs> and um, it's just been such a blessing to get to know you better. Um, both of y'all, just everything you've poured into me, the generosity that you've shown, and you've shown me what it means to rely on the Lord's strength and to push through even when you don't feel like doing it. Um, I want to thank Jim and Susan Birmingham for um, inviting me to be a part of your book club last year. That has been one of the things the Lord has used so much in my life. And um, I'm also thankful for the mentorship that you've given me and for you teaching me how to communicate better than I did before. <laughs> so I'm thankful for you. Um, I want to thank Josh and Sarah Barnett for showing me what it means to love God relentlessly and Josh for inviting me to be involved in youth and everything. When I first got here that you just welcomed me so well. Um, I want to thank Lucas and Dylan Vaughn. Lucas, I'm thankful that I got you as my track leader because um, you were the leader that taught me how to be a better leader. And I'm thankful for that. You taught me how to be a true worshiper. So um, I wanna thank my mom and dad for um, just instilling so many things into me that you didn't have to and for sacrificing so that I could have a firm foundation to come from. Um, I also wanna thank the rest of my family for just being so supportive and um, for helping me to be the woman that I am. I want to thank this community and this church. There is no way to list what you've taught me. Um, you are all my second family, and I'm so thankful that you just brought in a random girl from Texas and um, took me under your wings with open arms, and you had grace for me as I've grown and matured. Um, I want to thank everyone who's welcomed me into, into their home since I moved here. You'll never know how much it meant to me and continues to bless me to this day. Thank you to everyone who supported me financially, emotionally, and spiritually. Um, your investments have made such a difference and um, have inspired me to invest in other people as well. I want to thank, um, once again, just everyone in this community um, for everything you've poured into me. Thank you, Colton, for being an amazing RA. <laughs> Um, and for being my friend before then. <laughs> and um, thank you to all my friends here for just everything that you have poured into me. Um, I've never met such a loving group of people as I have in this community. Um, the hunger that you have to invest in the younger generation has made a huge difference in my life. And I thank God that I get to be encouraged by all of you. And all it makes me want to do is just pass it on. Um, I wish I could say the name of every person the Lord has used in this amazing journey, but just know that if you're in this church, you have been a part of changing my life for the better. This has been a time of refinement and transformation unlike anything I've ever experienced. All I can say is, as I close out this incredible nine months, is that the Lord is good. He's my provider, my rock, and my hiding place. He's captivated my heart to a greater degree through this time. And gratefulness is all I can express with all of my heart. Thank you. Well, they didn't kick me out. <laughs> um, my name is Jake Driggers and Leaders Academy Leaders Academy has been a tremendously great season of growth for me, spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Um, firstly, I want to thank the Lord for leading me here and providing me the opportunity to come here. Um, one of the things I first remember Paul saying when we first got here was that you can only go as high as you go deep. And for nine months, I leaned into all the teaching here cultivated my own relationship with God in my quiet time, personal life. I read the whole Bible during the whole nine months and worked on my prayer life more than I ever have. And I just want to say thank you to all the leaders. But first, 
I want to honor um, Pastor Tim, Terry, and um, Miss Hetty, as well as the church family, for starting and supporting Leaders Academy and the heart y'all have for the next generation and for always casting vision into our lives. And it's, it's just been stuff that we'll hold on to for the rest of our lives. Um, I want to thank Paul for pushing us to become great leaders, not just good leaders. Um, one of the things I really love about Paul is what you see is what you get with Paul. He's such a great example of a godly leader, husband, mentor, and just a great man of character. And it's, he's just one that we can all look to. Thank you for investing your time into us. And we're so grateful for you, Paul. I also want to thank my best track leader and host family, um, Lucas and Dylan Vaughn. I'm grateful for all the times y'all have opened your home to me, the amazing meals y'all fed me, uh, the random adventures to Sonic in very uncomfortable ways that <laughs> they will get. <laughs> um, I really appreciate always being able to talk to y'all for advice. Uh, Lucas and Dylan, y'all have been such a great example of what a Christian home should look like. And it's definitely one that I will compare my future life to and how I want to model my future family. Um, I'm just so grateful for all that y'all have taught me and all that y'all have taught me in worship, track, leadership, and just being there for me. I also want to thank the Birminghams for being such a positive influence in my life, for pushing me, investing in me, mentoring me, and um, meeting with me at home plate. <laughs> y'all have given me such an opportunity to work with y'all, like developing y'all's podcasts, just working at home for y'all, and just, I'm so thankful for your endless generosity. Um, lastly, I wanna thank my mom, my family, and my late grandfather, Major General Rex Triggers, for instilling a worth ethic of excellence and character from the beginning and shaping me to the man I am today. Um, after Leaders Academy, I plan on staying in Hot Springs and moving my photography business here and staying involved with the church. I'm truly honored to have been a part of this year and I will cherish everything that I've learned from here. I can't wait to see where the Lord leads me next. Thank you. Uh, my name is Glenn Fancher. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking my parents for allowing me to uh, just to come here and to step out um, out of my comfort zone and definitely out of theirs. Um, thank you for allowing me to take the step that I needed to uh, to grow and to for, to allow God to shape me and mold me into the man of God He wants me to be and into the leader that I needed to learn to be. Uh, thank you to my host home, Linda and Ricky Skaggs, for welcoming Tyler and I into your home for the for the for these nine months. Um, and thank you for allow for allowing your home just to be a safe place to talk. Um, thank you so much for just your words of wisdom and uh, just your advice. Um, thank you for allowing your home just to be a, a getaway from the dorms for a few hours. Thank you for feeding us and just thank you for um, allowing us to be in your home. Uh, thank you to all the leaders who have taught the classes, Paul, Josh, Lucas, and the Birminghams. Y'all just continue to pour out your, your wisdom and your just knowledge onto us, and you never were, you never got frustrated or annoyed. Um, I'm so thankful that y'all were the leaders and that y'all just continue to give us so much knowledge on a lot of spiritual things and a lot of, uh, just practical things as well. Thank you to Noah Tice for being the, the best track leader ever. Uh, you are more than a track leader to me. You are a mentor and a friend. 
Thank you for showing me that I am capable of um, a lot more than I think I am with media. Uh, the most challenging thing I did was probably the five minute countdown video. I wanted to prove myself to those who in the past said it was the hardest thing to do. It took me three months and a lot of patience, but now I can look, to, I can look at the countdown and tell myself I did that. Um, I came in knowing only how to put words on the screen and it came out with so many more skills and knowledge than I could ever imagine. Thank you. Thank, thanks to you, I have learned that media isn't just taking pictures or posting on social media, but it is capturing moments. It's giving God glory for every single person that reaches, every single post that reaches someone. I would like to thank Pastor Tim for starting Leaders Academy and for starting CMC. Without him, I would not be standing here today. Thank you, CMC family, for welcoming us interns here and for making us a part of your family. And last but not least, I would like to thank God. Without him, I would not be here today. I fully believe he called me here. Um, I cannot wait to see what he has for me in the future and after uh, this internship, after this today and for the next season of my life. God has shown me that I am his son and what, I, what it truly looks like to be his son. He has shown me, he has revealed to me that our words have so much power and that we need to speak life and speak what the Bible says about who you are. I would like to end with this scripture, 1 Peter 2, 9. For you are a chosen people, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. And as a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he has called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. Thank you. My name's Cameron, and these last nine months at Leaders Academy have by far been the most growing months of my life. If someone came up to me this time last year and said, the Lord's way is best, it's his purpose and his plan that is the one that will prevail, I would have said, I wholeheartedly agree. But if that same person said instead, the Lord is going to call you to Hot Springs, Arkansas, not just for nine months, but afterwards ask you to leave Texas and officially move to this city to partner with him in his work there, I probably would have said, did you think about praying about that before coming to me? <laughs> but since day one of Leaders Academy till this day of completion, nothing but that has proved true. His plan is best. The challenge that the Lord calls you to at this internship is one of the complete laying down of your own will to take up his. Because of this, the whole journey has been worth every bit. Because to save your life is to lose it, but to lose your life for his sake is to find it. He has faithfully shown me more of who he is and taught me how to love him and others more. He is a genius crafter, a brilliant potter, and the work he's done has shaped me to look more like Christ. And for that, I first thank and honor him. I want to also thank Miss Hetty Lou Brooks, her son Tim, and his wife Terry. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for saying yes daily to the Lord. Thank you for hosting us with open arms for the movie nights and the pool parties, the correction, encouragement, and example of a godly home. The impact y'all have made is one that will last for eternity. Thank you to this church body and community for supporting and providing for us interns in ways you did not have to. Y'all have been such a blessing and each relationship I have built is one I'm grateful forever for. I want to thank my parents, Rick and Kara, for raising me in the fear of the Lord and providing financially for me to be able to attend. Thank you to my family for your endless support in me following God's will for my life. I wouldn't be here without y'all and leaving you is one of the hardest things I've ever done. Thank you, Paul and Angela, for day after day laying down your lives for us. Thank you for the sacrifices you have made, big and small, including the ones that nobody but the Lord knows about. You both exemplify unwavering faith in our God and spur us on to run this race even harder than we did yesterday. Josh and Sarah, thank you for teaching me what it means to lock shields with your family and lead them in following the Lord. The wisdom I've gained from you is invaluable and I have seen a tangible example of zeal for his house consuming an entire family and I can't settle for anything less when I have my own. 
Jim and Susan Birmingham, thank you for being so willing to pour into us interns and share the knowledge you have gained. The way the Lord has used you in my life has been the biggest blessing. He knew this internship needed you guys, and I'm so grateful to say y'all are truly my family. Last, but definitely not least, my track leader Lucas and his wife Dylan, who are also my host family. I simply can't put into words what y'all and the girls mean to me. I never thought I could so quickly connect with people so that they are not just family and title, but have truly become family. Thank you for opening your home, for giving so selflessly, for all you have taught me. Lucas, thank you for your patience with me and track and pouring into me and showing me to stay loose and have fun. I'll never forget all the Lord has done through you guys. This summer and fall, I'll be serving in the church and doing ministry with the youth here. And though it's not what I expected, I can say with full assurance, his plan is best. Thank you so much. I can say for certain that these last nine months have been the hardest nine months of my life. Now that right there is a quote from a man that gave a speech three years ago to this day on this very stage in this exact spot. I was 16 years old sitting where you sit right now as I watched my brother Reagan give his graduation speech. He talked about how for nine months in Leaders Academy he pursued relationships discipline in Jesus. And I remember sitting there thinking to myself, man, what a dork. <laughs> Could never be me, not this guy. That, what, nah. And yet, here I am, standing in front of you, graduating. It's, uh, it's been a wild ride. And um, <laughs> I remember him recounting all the memories he made, all the lessons he learned, all the bonds that he created. And it didn't quite register when I was sitting in those seats. The last few weeks, as I've been preparing this speech, it's been setting in. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say that. I have a lot of things to give. Um, first off, I want to thank mom and dad. I mean, guys, I made it. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <No. laughs> uh, I just seriously thank you guys so much for supporting me 100% and fully in this next chapter of my life. Um, next, I want to thank my other parents, the Birminghams. <laughs> You guys have blessed me so much, and I never could have imagined I'd come here with such spiritual mentors that are so willing to pour into me like you guys have, and I just thank you guys so much for that. Uh, I want to thank Josh for all the classes that he taught this year. I mean, the amount of knowledge that we got from you and the amount of books that I've written from your classes, uh, it's incredible, and I appreciate it, Josh. I want to thank Lucas and all the talks we've had in, our, in your uh, office and the development and growth that's come from that. I mean, that is, that's something that I'll never get anywhere else. So I appreciate it, Lucas. I also wanna thank Colton, the uh, late nights that you've poured into me in your apartment, of course, uh, before curfew, of course, obviously. Um, but seriously, I appreciate it, Colton. And Noah, obviously, bro. <laughs> I, uh, I left home, I left two brothers, but I came here and I gained another one, man. You're, uh, you're incredible, dude. Paul, you know, I've told you this, but when I first came here, I thought you were a bit of a meanie, <laughs> a bit of a savage, just gonna roast me all the time. And I was right. <laughs> but what I didn't know and what I learned just a couple of weeks in is the love that you have for us, the willingness to pour into us. I know for a fact that any time, any day, if I need to call somebody, you'd pick it up. And I appreciate it, Paul. And thank you, Angela, for hosting us, having us over at your house, and also being able to just pour into us and being able to fight alongside Paul 
I appreciate you so much. Tim and Terry, you guys have been so welcoming, so incredible. Miss Terry, I will always cherish our long hugs. You wouldn't just always a bear hug and it's amazing. It makes me feel so loved. Tim, thanks for giving me the job, man. <laughs> I appreciate it and uh, genuinely watching your heart and coming here and seeing how genuine you are and how much of a passion you have for the people here and the people everywhere Lord ah, man I just thank the Lord for you Tim and appreciate this whole incredible environment that you've created I also of course want to thank the Lord he's uh, he's worked on my heart and he's moved on my heart in such incredible ways and I never thought I'd have a, such a incredible relationship with him that I've built over these last nine months. To quote another great man, Rhett Green, um, (laughs) this last nine months has genuinely been some of the greatest, most fulfilling, and hardest nine months of my life, except for when I was in my mother's womb, of course. Those were very important, but genuinely... Um, these last nine months, I'll never take back. And I just want to thank each and every one of you that supported me along this journey. Thank you, guys. Hi, I'm Victoria Howie. Um, Wow, okay, I got tissues for a reason. These past nine months, I've learned how to really step back and let the Lord just take control. Um, And he's put me in so many situations this year where I really had no other choice but to do that. Um, And because of that, I get to look at obstacles as opportunities now, and that's been such a blessing in my life. (laughs) Throughout this year, I finally realized my identity is in Christ. I'm an heir of Christ more than a conqueror and child of God. I'm seen, known, and loved, and I no longer feel like I need to seek the approval of others. The Lord has shown me how to be content in every season of my life, and he's my peace, comfort, and joy. He's pruned me into a confident woman of God, and I could not be more grateful for it. I want to start by thanking Ms. Hetty for starting this ministry and Pastor Tim and Terry for pursuing the vision that they had for L.A., no matter the sacrifices it took. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for your financial support, but more importantly, planting seeds of faith and strength in me. My mom taught me how to step out in faith, and my dad taught me work ethic. Thank you for raising me in a household that pursues and loves the Lord, and thank you for pushing me to be 1% better than the day before. You guys have always been my biggest supporters, and it's because of you guys that I am the woman I am today. I'm so incredibly thankful for my grandparents and all of the encouragement that they've given me throughout my entire life. I truly would not be here without your emotional and financial support. Mimi, thank you for forcing me to go to Brook Hill and High Point, because if you didn't, I probably wouldn't be up here today. Thank you to my host family, Terry and Deanne Smith. You guys have shown Chloe and I nothing but love and care. I didn't know I could love food so much until Deanne made country fried steak. (laughs) That was so good. Your hospitality has made a huge impact on my life and it will never be forgotten. Colton, buddy, thank you for being the coolest RA and providing me with a job. Your wisdom is so appreciated, more than you'll ever know, and I love you like a big brother. I can't wait to see you lead other interns towards Christ. Austin, you're probably maybe one of the coolest junior high pastors I've ever met. Thank you for the job opportunity that you've given me and teaching me how to be assertive while also being loving. I now want to thank all of my teachers, Jim and Susan, Because of you, I now have a whole new healthy style of communication. You guys have opened up your home to me when I was dying from a stomach virus. Thank you for your constant love and support. I love both of you so incredibly much. Lucas, your one-liners will stick with me forever. (laughs) Thank you for pouring your wisdom into our lives and always cheering us up with your humor. I've never seen someone worship like you have, and now I know how to truly worship and realizing that I'm dying to myself every time I worship. Stay loose and have fun. Tori and Miss Angela, thank you guys for showing me what a real Proverbs 31 woman looks like. I love and admire you both so much. Paul, thank you for being such a spiritual father to me. You have poured so much of yourself into our lives. Thank you for setting such a godly example for each of us. It is evident that the Lord lives in you and is working through you with each and every one of us. 
Thank you for your tremendous amount of love and wisdom and pouring so much time and kindness into us. I love you so much. Thank you. Josh. Josh, I don't know where to start. I really don't. There's so much I want to say and there's not enough time. One reason I chose Youth Trek was specifically so I could work with you and I'm so grateful that I did. Thank you for not micromanaging me, but always challenging me in new ways. To watch you lead your family and lead our youth group has been such a blessing. Your humility and submission to the Lord is so amazing to see. Because of you, I now know how to pray selflessly. I now see the result of the benefits of the secret place. Thank you for being such an incredible track leader, but an even better mentor. Thank you for being a father to me. I love you more than anything. My CMA high school and junior high students, Thank you for making my day so much brighter and for all the love you guys have shown me and the laughs that we've all shared. I love each of you so much and I wish I could thank all of you individually. Lastly, thank you to the church family. The first Sunday I was here, I panicked because I was late and Paul came over to me and he just gave me a big hug and he was like, hey, it's okay. And I've never felt so loved. I already felt like I belonged and you all have made me feel so incredibly welcomed. Thank you for your outpour of love and encouragement, and thank you for being there for me when you barely knew me. Thank you. This year has proved the Lord's faithfulness and provision, and it's because of him that I had this opportunity to learn and grow to see myself how the Father sees me. I can't wait to use the things that LA has taught me to build the kingdom here. Thank you so much. What's up? Okay. Sorry, I meant to say hello. My name is Janessa. Um, <laughs> Hermita. <laughs> Leaders Academy in Christian Ministries Church has impacted my life in such a mighty way. I came to this campus broken, hurt, and insecure. Now I leave knowing my identity in the Lord. I thank Miss Hetty, Pastors Tim, Terry, Paul, and Josh for being so faithful to God, for seeking his face, his heart, and his vision for this campus. Without your faithfulness, strength, and obedience, this campus would not be the holy ground that it is. I want to thank my grandparents and my parents for finding and showing me this extremely small, tiny town in Arkansas. <laughs> I truly thank you for not only financially supporting me, but for supporting my walk with the Lord. Thank you for being obedient to God's calling over our lives as a family. Without you all, I wouldn't be here. I love you guys. Oh, Josh, I'm not going to cry. Your authentic love for the Lord, your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and your heart for his people is so admirable and contagious. You have shown me what a spiritual father looks like, to constantly speak over my life, to see things in me I never knew I had, and the unconditional love you carry. I hope you know that I admire the godly man that you are. You have been an extremely important figure in my life, and I truly look up to you. To my track leader, Lucas, you are probably the coolest worship pastor I know, except for when you make me play my guitar. <laughs> I know it's not always fun when I ask you if I did okay after every song I lead, but thank you for always answering me and never getting tired of speaking affirming words over my life. Thank you for always pushing me to be a better worship leader, for teaching me how to minister to the heart of God, and for showing me how to be confident while leading others. To know you is truly a blessing. Paul, you are the definition of a man who follows after the heart of God. Your dedication to God's calling on your life, your faithfulness to the Lord through every season, and the man of God you are is more than admirable. I'm truly so thankful that the Lord has chosen and entrusted you to lead, love, and build leaders out of young adults. There is no one else I would rather learn from. I love you, Paul and Miss Angela. To my host home, Tiffany, Eric, Sawyer, Braxton, and Cameron Oliver, thank you for not only opening your home to me, but for also allowing me into your family during this season. Y'all are my home away from home, and I'm so thankful for the relationships we have built. I love you guys. Thank you to Pastor Tim and Terry for the many years you have dedicated to this community and the lives in it. Your hard work does not go unnoticed. You are both such a blessing to so many lives, and I hope you know how much I honor you both. 
I lost what my card. Okay. <laughs> Lastly, but most importantly, I want to thank the Lord for walking with me in this season of life. Lord, you have been so faithful and so patient with me. I have learned the unconditional, never-ending love you have for me, and I want to give you the same. You are my one thing, and I never want to seek anything other than you. I believe the Lord has so much more healing and growth he wants me to experience here, so I will be seeing you guys next year. Uh, and then, yeah. Thank you again to the leadership and this entire church community for being so authentic and so caring and loving for us young adults who are crazy. Um, thank you for loving us through it all, and I will never forget this year and these moments. Thank you. <sighs> I could easily go as long-winded as Josh, but since I only share about 95% of his end-time beliefs and don't necessarily think we have 10,000 years, I'll try to keep this short. <laughs> uh, if you don't know me, my name's David Hoven, and if you do know me, my name's still David Hoven. Uh, first, I want to thank my friends from the Bro Talk podcast, Noah, Colton, Austin, Reagan for being a light to me when I was desperately searching for hope and showing me that I was not alone and that there were other young men who shared my passion. The seeds y'all sowed two years ago began the process of bringing me here and restoring my hope not only in this generation but also in my personal walk with the Lord. Before coming to LA, I had an intense passion for revival, but I had nearly burned out and was desperately searching for hope. I was wrestling with a lot of disillusionment and the meager adult life I had built was crumbling beneath my feet. I was pursuing success in a way that was building an effective shell around my insecurities, and God in his goodness broke it down to heal me and build me into who I was born to be. L.A. provided an excellent arena for me to wrestle with God and with myself, and I did wrestle with God a lot, but I committed that I would not let him go until he blessed me, and he did, and I didn't. When I first came here, I did not know how to trust another man, um, if I was honest with myself, I wasn't really sure how to trust God either. To reference one of Jesus' parables, I felt that I'd been promised bread and fish, but given serpents and scorpions. God used my experience here to show me not only the goodness of his intentions for me, but also that he had given me power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Words cannot express my gratitude to the Lord, the amazing teachers here, and the brothers who supported me along the way. I now know I'll be able to lead my future family with confidence, the flame of my heart has been reignited, and the habits of discipline I've developed here I will carry forward to bring success in the rest of my life. Uh, Tim, Terry, and I know she's not here, but Hetty as well, thank you all for being faithful to the call I've put in your life. Thank you for all the growth you've gone through the past decades and keeping yourselves on the cutting edge of maturity and leadership so this place can stay a, an environment and a culture of growth so that young guys like myself can come here and continue to grow and it would be a place where we can flourish and be pushed forward. Thank you so much for your faithfulness there. Paul and Angela, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for staying rooted. Thank you for all the commitments and sacrifices you made over the past decades to be here and to pour into us year after year after year. Thank you for all you poured into my life. Thank you for the stable, faithful character you've been, for all our mentorship conversations and everything you've poured into me, invested in me, and really transformed my life and mindset this year. Uh, Josh, uh, definitely the zeal of hit your father's house has consumed you. Uh, thank you for your fiery passion to settle for nothing less than the heart of uh, our father. That's really been tremendously inspiring to me and has helped keep my phlegm going a lot and has been very pivotal for my growth here. Thank you, Noah. Uh, you've been an excellent teacher, uh, an excellent track leader, and a great friend. You've Help me grow a lot, help me push myself a lot. And we've had so many good conversations where you just poured into me with maturity and clarity and really helped keep me sharpened and strengthened. And you've been a great teacher and always been one of my best friends. Thank you so much. Your dad has always been one of my favorite memories. Um, Colton, best RA ever. Thank you for everything. And I do feel strong. Uh, <laughs> Jim and Susan Birmingham, thank y'all so much. You know, I don't really have a lot of grandparent presence in my life, so y'all have really filled that role for me amazingly. 
Um, thank you for all our conversations and everything you've invested in me and helped me work through the past nine months so much, so much. Thank you for helping me disentangle myself from all my past stuff and help rewire my mind to take ownership of my life and lead forward with clarity and passion. And you all have really been a tremendously pivotal influence and I'm gonna be able to produce so much good fruit in my life going forward because everything, all the nets you helped untangle, all that fun stuff. Thank you for your patience, thank you so much. David and Kim, thank you all for everything, for all the ways you poured into Dante and I and all the times you've had taken us out to, for meals or had us over to your home and all the conversations and mentorship. Thank you for teaching me how to fly a plane and thanks Zach for teaching me how to build a knife. And really, y'all provided some of the best experiences I had here at LA and teach me so many new stuff. Welding, arc welding, forging, um, flying, all those amazing things. Thank you all so much. Uh, Jason Rolke, King Herod Hot, thank you for uh, helping me get home to my parents for Christmas. That was amazing. And to everyone here at the CMC family, thank you all for all your amazing support. I love every one of you. And this has definitely been one of the best churches I've been to. Reagan, thank you, man. Thank you for being a brother. Thank you for all the ways you sharpened and helped support me this year financially, emotionally, spiritually. Thank you for heeding that leaning God put on your heart a year ago to, well, less than a year ago to uh, get me up here in every way you've helped me throughout that. And it's really changed my life, bro. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for giving me work to help me up here. Thank you for all your support. Thank you really for stepping into my life and making a way for something to happen in my life that neither myself nor my family was able to do for myself. Thank you so much. Y'all have really changed my life. Thank you, everyone. I know that when I look back over the past four years of my life, I did not find out about LA until late last July. But um, I, when I look at over the last four years of my life, every single decision I've made, God has used to bring me to this moment right here. And that would not be possible without a lot of growth and work. And God's work in my life and obedience and stepping out in faith. And it would not be possible without the obedience of so many people in this room in so many ways. You know, my, own, my personal family is 1,200 miles away. And if you all watch this, I love you very much. Um, but one thing y'all have shown me here is that whoever hears and obeys the will of my Father in heaven, the same as my mother, sister, and brother. I look here, I, I see fathers, I see brothers, I see sisters, I see mothers. Thank you all. You all have been amazing. God bless you. Hello. My name is Rachel Johnson, and I'm going to try to sum up the goodness of God in under three minutes. So bear with me. I want to start by thanking the Lord for upholding me for guiding me, for healing me, and for loving me in ways that no one ever could. I'm gonna spend the rest of my life serving him with gratitude for everything that he's done. Next, I would like to thank Miss Hetty for without her faithfulness and obedience to the vision she was given, none of us would be sitting here today. She's been such an example of the righteousness that only comes from lifelong obedience to the word. She's poured so much into us and expected nothing in return. I'd like to thank my host family, the Bullmans, for welcoming me into their home and for making it a refuge while I was away from my family and for my host sister for always being there. I would like to thank my family for supporting me, for pushing me to do things I never thought I could, and my church and pastors for showing me the love of the Father in ways I had never seen or expected, and for making it possible for me to come to Leaders Academy and thrive here. I am a product of your obedience to the Lord. Next, I'd like to thank Paul and Angela for giving up your time to set, up, set us up for success. You guys are such an example of what, a Christ, of what Christian living is supposed to look like, and I'm so grateful to have you guys as mentors in my life. I'd like to thank Jim and Susan Birmingham for your patience and your willingness to lead us and teach us, for opening up your home to us. And I think I can speak for my entire class when I say that your good and wise counsel has propelled us forward. I want to thank all of the staff and all of the teachers for pouring into us with such passion about the word. I wish I could thank everybody. Thank you, Josh and Lucas and Tori and everyone who came and spoke, who guest speakers. I'd like to thank Pastor Tim and Terry 
for remaining faithful to the vision of Leaders Academy and for opening their home to us. I'd like to thank all of the Leaders Academy alumni who stayed involved with us and poured into us, gave us advice, helped us plan events, and became some of our closest friends. You guys have made this year so special. You gave us a glimpse into our, our near futures and assurance that we were going to make it. Thank you, Colton, for being an amazing RA and for being intentional and taking time to meet us where we were and pour into us. Last but not least, I would like to thank my track leader, Tori, for the influence she's had on my life. You've taught me so much, and you've been such a great mentor. I can't wait to see how our friendship grows in the years to come. The Lord and all of these people have carried me through so much growth this past nine months, and I'm eternally grateful. My heart and mind have been completely transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I can say with confidence that my life will never be the same. I am very excited to announce that I will be attending Leaders Academy again in the fall. I'm so excited to stay plugged into this amazing, amazing community. So thank you all for coming to support and celebrate us. I haven't cried yet, Paul. <laughs> we'll see if I will now. Anyway, um, hi, my name is Chloe Kinnaman. Um, these past nine months, I have learned so much, including the upside down concept of humility. It's completely opposite of, the, of what the world wants, the concept of not just putting others first, but thinking of Jesus more and yourself less. I learned the importance of dying to yourself, and that includes surrendering your attitude, your tongue, and what I wanted to do. The importance of not getting so caught up in the logistics of everything, and to just stay loose and have fun. I learned the importance of surrounding yourself with people that support you all the way to the end. But the greatest thing the Lord did was he kept putting me in situations, in moments, where all I could do is trust in him. And this forced me to go to him in those moments of confusion, which ultimately brought me closer to him. I would first like to thank my track leader, Tori. Where do I even begin? Thank you for the countless times that I came and cried to you, and you listened to me and gave me advice. Thank you for putting Sage and Rachel and I in positions, of course, you can't see, <laughs> um, in positions to be creative and experiment in event planning and just week-to-week kids' church and everything else that we do which is a lot, by the way. <laughs> thank you for all that you do here for CMC. It doesn't go unnoticed. Next, I would like to thank my host parents, Terry and Deanne Smith, <laughs> for always the great advice and the great food that you gave me in Victoria. Thank you for hosting so many interns for so many years. It really doesn't go un unnoticed. I would like to thank my parents, Jake and Heidi Kinneman, for always supporting me in all that I do, for raising me in a stable, God-fearing environment. Thank you for raising me on a solid foundation of Jesus Christ. It's because of your obedience and submission to the Holy Spirit that I am the person that I am today. Thank you for always listening to me, guiding me, and grounding me in Jesus. I love you both so much. I would like to thank Jim and Susan Birmingham, Lucas, and Josh, and all of our teachers for pouring wisdom, knowledge, and wise counsel into all of us. Thank you, Jim and Susan, for teaching us the correct way to communicate and solve, all, solve conflict. This has truly revolutionized my way of thinking and handling conflict. I also thank you for opening yourselves up to be mentors to all of us. I know that I can speak for us all. It doesn't go unappreciated. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, Lucas, for always being real with us all. Thank you for not being afraid to correct us and also to crack a joke <laughs> to light up the room or make things really awkward. <laughs> Thank you, Josh, for always making the classroom freezing cold so we don't fall asleep. But actually, thank you. <laughs> thank you for teaching us biblical perspectives and concepts and being an example of what it looks like to be a living sacrifice and a wholehearted Christian. Next is Colton. Thank you for not only being the best RA, but also being a really great friend. Thank you for all the wisdom that you have poured into us. Thank you for making the dorms, not just the dorms, but a welcoming place that I got the privilege of calling a home for nine months. Thank you, Tim and Terry, and Ms. Hetty, for casting the vision of Leaders Academy so many years ago. It is because of your obedience and submission to the Holy Spirit that so many young adults' lives, including ours and mine, that have been, we have all been changed forever. 
Next, thank you to the entire LA staff. Thank you for making it financially possible for me to be here. I had pretty much thrown the idea of Leaders Academy out the door to pursue what I thought I wanted to do, but in reality, it was just my own plans. So it wasn't until Paul called my parents telling them that they wanted me to be here that I finally had to step out and pray about it. And God was like, you're gonna go here. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and uh, so thank you again for making it possible for me to be here. Speaking of Paul, I'd like to thank you for showing your heart to us all for being probably one of the most real genuine people I know. And thank you for being consistent in all these years, even though you were over my parents and they were here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Honestly though, it's been such an honor to be under the same person that was under my parents because you've affected not only my parents, but you've affected me just as much. Thank you for being so consistent and being so in tune with what the Lord wants to do all of these years. You're always there when we need you. There are so many people that can always count on you. And now including me. Leaders Academy would not be Leaders Academy without you. And lastly, I'd like to thank Jesus for guiding me here and being patient with me, for leading me to this place, to grow and form relationships, to think outside of myself, to navigate my leadership, and most of all, truly trust him with every ounce of my being. I truly will never be able to thank you, Jesus, for enough enough for leading me here. I can proudly announce that I'll be moving back home to Texarkana to be an intern at my church, Wellspring, and uh, take over our kids' ministry. But I truly cannot wait to see what God has in store for every single person that's on this stage. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm, I'm Natalie Marquez, and these past nine months have been the greatest months of my life, like completely. Um, the condition of my heart has completely been transformed, uh, not only my heart, but my mind and my soul. Um, I came in so broken, so lost, but I'm like made new now, and I live in victory, so it's been such a blessing. Um, above all else, I just want to thank God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, all three, <laughs> because they're... <laughs> Without him, I wouldn't even be alive. I, he's given me so many opportunities. I've turned my back on him a hundred million times, and he's still right there next to me, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, I also want to thank my amazing parents, um, my mom and my dad. They've been, yeah, I don't know, I have the best mom and dad. Sorry, guys. Like, <laughs> literally, um, they have been so amazing to me. They've never left my side, because I've been, I've been like up and down sometimes, and they're still there. And um, thank you my, for my dad for giving me the best work ethic and just showing me that hard work does pay off. And my mom for always being there, praying for me all night long. Um, I'm so, so thankful. And then I also want to thank Parker um, for being the best man on earth. <laughs> um, thank you for being such a genuine man. And like, you remind me of my dad so much. Like, even the small things, like, y'all both like to carry cash. Like, or something like that. Like, <laughs> like those things are just like, wow. Like, he is a second dad to me. And I'm so thankful for always being there, to, there for me and mentoring me. Thank you, Miss Angela, for always giving me hugs and complimenting me. You make me feel so confident. Um, I also want to thank um, Josh just because he's so passionate. And, like, his passion transfers to mine. Like, he influences me so much. And I, like... It's kind of weird, not in a weird way, but I like I want a husband to be like him. He's such a good husband, such a good father, and it just like inspires me. So thank you. I also want to thank my host family, Sydney and Jason. Um, I don't know where y'all are at, but um, I just want to thank y'all over there. Yes, I want to thank y'all for being so amazing, opening your house for me and accepting me as like your own child. Even this is like, thank you for cooking for me. Sorry for being so picky, but. Thank you, thank you for always trying, and I, I'm so eternally grateful. Um, I also want to thank the Birminghams. Y'all have been, y'all have given me the greatest blessing of my life. Like, you know what it is, and I'm just so thankful. Like, it's crazy, I'm a boss lady now, so I'm thankful for that. <laughs> because my dream has come true, I'm a businesswoman. So I'm thankful for that, thank you, Lord. Um, I'm thankful that you've like poured on so much to me, given me so much wisdom, and always have open arms for me, so I'm thankful. Um, I'm also thankful for Noah Tice, um, just because for pushing me and pushing me like 
over whatever I thought I could do. He was like, no, you do it. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. But I'm like so scared. Thank you for like making me scream I'm strong in the media room and crying two hours later because I couldn't get a video like the way I wanted it. So I'm thankful. Um, I'm also thankful for coats and jeans in the back. Um, thank you for giving me the best nickname ever, Chiquita Bean. Like you make me feel loved and thank you for being such a good role model for all of us here. Um, I want to thank Tim and Terry Oh my gosh, you have opened, first of all, you opened your house for me for this summer and I'm so thankful. You've given me a job, so I'm not gonna be broke. I'm also <laughs> thankful. And not only that, Miss Terry also likes sports. So there's another woman who loves sports with me. So we're gonna be enjoying some good football games. I'm gonna make you like some UFC too, even though you think it's a little vicious. Um, but you're gonna like it, I promise. And then, <laughs> I'm also thankful for this entire congregation. I've never, met or anyone a uh, church that's been so welcoming not only towards me but towards everyone your arms are always open and i'm so thankful for that i feel like home here and i love y'all very 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 much um and i just love y'all everyone and i i'm thankful okay bye <laughs> Hi, my name is Carly Miguez, and I want to start tonight by saying thank you to my parents and my grandparents for um, always raising me in a good, godly um, household and really showing me the importance of Christ in my life, because it is really important. Um, so with that being said, I thought I had it all figured out when I came to Leaders Academy. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I quickly realized that I had been living kind of really of the world and um, I had one foot in and one foot out. I went to church and, you know, I prayed sometimes. But I was definitely not where I needed to be. Um, I placed my identity in relationships and my status rather than in Christ. So I want to thank my Heavenly Father for taking those chains off of me and restoring me. <laughs> and I would also like to thank my host family, Courtney and Josh. Um, for showing me what walking in freedom looks like regardless of the past. Um, I love and admire y'all so, so, so much. Next, I want to thank Lucas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lucas, thank you for showing me what having a true heart of worship looks like. You've taught me how to die to myself and use my gifts to glorify him. Because honestly, I really just joined worship track because I was like, oh, I can sing. But he's really showed me the importance of what worshiping him looks like. And next, I want to thank Josh um, for being one of the best examples of somebody who fully relies on the Lord for everything. Everything. <laughs> thank you for having faith in me and believing that I have more to offer than I thought that I did. And now I'd like to thank Jim and Susan Birmingham for not only being incredible mentors, but for teaching our communications class. Without it, I think we would have killed each other. <laughs> And now I'd like to thank the man, Paul Kern. <laughs> Paul, thank you for your endless grace. Every time I've come to Paul with an issue, which has been quite a few, um, he said something that really stuck out to me, which is, I know that's not where your heart is. And I don't think that you ever realized how much that truly meant to me because every time you were right, it wasn't where my heart was. And you really showed me that all my heart really wants is to serve the Lord. And lastly, I want to thank Tim and Terry for starting Leaders Academy and having this vision and walking in that obedience. And I'm so grateful that I get to experience the fruit of that. Um, I would like to announce that I will be attending Leaders Academy again in the fall for a second year. And thank you to the whole church congregation for your endless support in my life. I love y'all. everyone. Uh, my name is Renee and I'm a second year intern here. First, I want to start off by thanking some people. First, I want to thank God. He has grown me in ways that I never thought was possible. He has provided me in even many ways even just this year. He has never and will never give up on me and words can't describe how grateful I am for that. Next, I want to thank Miss Hetty and Pastor Tim and Terry for starting this. I just want to thank you guys for saying yes and pushing through even whenever it was tough 
and for not giving up because there's so many people that get to reap the fruit of that. So just thank you for that. Next, I want to thank leadership, the Birminghams. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom and the time that you poured into our lives. Paul, thank you for letting God use you so that you can encourage others. Miss Angela, thank you for being such a great example of what a Proverbs 31 woman is. Thank you for your wisdom and kindness that you have shown me in my time of being here. Lucas, thank you for all of your amazing one-liners that you have said in all of your classes. Thank you for being so reliable and such a good sounding board while also keeping everything fun and lighthearted. Also, uh, your mom. Oh my God. <laughs> Josh, thank you for being the best track leader. You have pushed me in many ways and you have guided me throughout. Thank you for being such a spiritual father to me and for not giving up on me. I appreciate all your encouragement. You have made such an impact on my life. I can't even begin to put into words how much you have changed my life. Thank you for seeing my potential and being willing to call it out of me. I love you so much. You have helped me see the Father's love for me. Thank you for being such a great example of what I want my life to look like. Also, if this youth pastor gig doesn't work out, I think you have a solid career as a movie critic. No. <laughs> Thank you to my mom for always encouraging me. Thank you for supporting me and doing everything that you can possible to make my dreams come true. I don't know what I would do without you. I love you so much and I'm so thankful that God placed you in my life. Thank you to my papa for his financial support and for his love and encouragement through this year. Thank you to my host home, Gary and Stacy. I love y'all. Thank you for taking it, me in my first year and bringing me back my second year. I love you guys so much. Thank you for giving me advice and for loving me. I can't wait to see how much more our relationship will grow. And thank you for giving me the best host dog that I could ask for. <laughs> I have learned a lot of things this year. One, I have learned that I'm going to have a great career in basketball, football, or any other sport that requires hand-eye coordination, <laughs> running, or throwing an object. I'm not a great catcher, I hate running, and when I throw an object, it very rarely goes far or even in the direction I was aiming at. <laughs> so if you want me on your team for a sport that requires anything of that nature, you can hit me up in the foyer after this. <laughs> now it will be on a first come, first serve basis, as I know that everyone will want me on their team, obviously. Two, I learned that it was possible for CMC to hire a worship leader that has hair. Congratulations! Three, I have learned that I have officially reached the stage where I am considered old to junior high students. Yay. Four, I have learned that someone giving me quarters or someone giving me a home-cooked meal is like Christmas morning. Five, I have learned that because of Olympics, I never want to play tug-of-war again. Like, ever. Like, hashtag traumatized. Six, I learned that when you live with 18 other people, you never have a quiet moment. Like, ever. You will never have a quiet moment. Also, I would like to thank Colton for being such a great RA. Thank you for keeping the dorms fun and lighthearted, and thank you for making sure that none of us died. Really appreciate that. All jokes aside, though, I have learned so much. My first year, I got the tools of how to be a leader, and this year, I learned how to use those tools. These nine months have been so hard, but so rewarding. I have grown closer to God than I ever thought possible. This year hasn't looked anything like I thought it would. God removed labels that I had put on me, and they were there for a really long time. I never in my wildest dreams would have ever picked youth track, but I'm so glad that I listened to God and picked it. I'm so glad that I came back a second year and sowed these seeds into my life. I know they will produce fruit for the rest of my life. I'm so excited to see where God takes me next and how much more I will grow. Thank you, CMC, for being such a great community and family. I appreciate everything that everyone has ever done or said for me. I, so that's all I have for now. So I will draw from my mentor, Josh. Rock and roll. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> My name is Tyler Persley, and I'm so glad to be here. I'm super duper thankful for the opportunity to come to Apply Life. I just want to take a few, few moments to thank some people who've been, out, been with me throughout this journey. Josh, 
This isn't coming from my notes. It's coming from my heart. I just want to, I just, you're truly just paving the way for leadership here at CMC. And it's just, it just inspires me. You just, your leadership, I'm going to look at the look notes again. <laughs> um, it's just been so awesome to work with you for just Youth Track, Youth, CM, CMA. And it's just been awesome, man. It's, it's inspirational. And um, just from me and everyone from Youth Track, I just want to thank you for being the best fearless track leader. <laughs> Nextly, man, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Nextly, <laughs> I want to thank my financial supporters, my Nana and Papa. They just paved the way for me forward to come, to be able to come here. I remember one day my Nana just came into my room with a pamphlet from Women's Academy. It's just, just like, you want to come to Leaders Academy? I was like, sure. <laughs> and that was probably the best decision I ever made. Because I went from, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come here, make some friends, and get some Jesus, to woo, hallelujah, yeah. woo. <laughs> Nextly, I want to thank, also, I just want to thank the Lord. And um, I just want to thank my host parents, Linda and Ricky Skaggs. Hi. Um, I want to thank them for opening their home for me and Glenn to come every Sunday for lunch, play some gore games, go kayaking. It's been so awesome. And thanks for you guys for conversations, stuff like that. It's just, you guys are just really just a part of my life. I'm just thankful for you guys. Lastly, I thank my parents. I want to thank Christian Howie and Christian Ministries and Christian Ministries Academy. I want to thank Paul. I want to thank Tim. I thank Austin and Colton, somewhere. Oh, in the back. Hi. <laughs> um, Pi Life has been the best time of my life, and I'm really thankful for all of you. Um, I can't wait. Oh, the Birmingham's. <laughs> Never got to thank you guys. Thank you all for communications and financials. Awesome. And yeah, I can't wait to take everything I have learned from here, move forward, and just be connected with these guys, you know? Yeah, yeah forever. And yeah, thank you, everyone. Peace out. guys. My name is Sajah Wilson. Thank you for all, all for coming out to celebrate us on this really special day. We really do appreciate y'all sitting through all 18 of our speeches. It really means a lot to us. Before I get started, I want to thank the Lord for his hand in my life. Without him, this journey I've been on wouldn't have been possible. I could not be more grateful. He truly changed my life during these nine months. I wish I had a dollar for every time we said these nine months. I want to thank my parents for supporting me financially, but most importantly for everything that they have done for me. I have amazing parents, and I wouldn't wish for anyone else. They've been there for me every step of the way as I've started my journey as a Christian woman. They prepared my mind and my heart for everything that I've learned here and taught me how to be teachable, and for that I will always be thankful. I came into this internship knowing that I needed to grow, but I had no idea how much I possibly could. I stand here today a completely new person than I was before, and Paul Kern has guided me through it all. Paul, you're a true inspiration. I love how you hear the Lord and live for him. You truly are growing the kingdom in huge ways. And as we all know, behind every good man is a great woman. So thank you, Miss Angela. You have truly taught me what it is to be a woman in both appearance and heart. A huge thanks to Josh Barnett, Lucas Vaughn, and the Birminghams. The classes y'all taught, even though Lucas only taught one, <laughs> were amazing. I've learned a lot from y'all as leaders, both spiritually and in everyday life. I've learned so much more than I think I can express. And thank you for growing me in ways that I really, really didn't know were possible or even that I needed. I only have the Holy Spirit to thank for blessing me with the best host home mama. Brenda, I love you so much. You're an amazing mentor. And you have shared so many words of advice with me and given me quite a few of my favorite memories here. 
And thank you for always having a place for me to come. And I cannot wait to continue to grow this mentorship. I also had two couples who did not have to open up their homes for me, yet they did. The Touchers and Katie Beth and Andrew Smith have had a huge impact on my life, sharing their stories with me and helping me through my own. Thank you guys so much. Tori, you have only ever grown me. You've had the hard conversations that some people won't. You're there to talk when I need it, and you have given me an amazing amount of space to grow, and I can't thank you enough. Colton? I can't imagine anyone else as my RA. You did a fantastic job. You were available and you put the effort in to connect with us. I really appreciate that so much. I also wanna thank all of the alumni that have stopped by the dorms and been there for us. You guys are so loving and caring in all of your own ways and I've loved having you there. None of this would have even been possible without the faithfulness of Ms. Hetty Brooks. She's definitely someone that I hope to shape my life after. Thank you for your willingness to carry the vision that the Lord gave you. And thank you to Tim and Terry Brooks for continuing to carry on this legacy and bring heaven down on earth, one intern, one child, and one ch church member at a time. Thank you for hosting us at your house throughout the year and sharing your wisdom with us. This has been the most welcoming church congregation I've ever been a part of. I wish I could go through and name everyone who has touched my life throughout this year, but then I'd go way over my time limit and Paul would come and kick me off the stage. <laughs> You, you all have touched my heart and given me a vision for my life. Thank you. I must give a huge thank you to every child I've been given the privilege of being with at CMA, in the nursery, and at Kids Church. Thank you to every one of their parents that have allowed me to pour into their child's lives. It was an honor, and I love your children with all of my heart. As far as my plans for the future go, I will be working all summer at Brook Hill Ranch. Then I'll be moving here to Hot Springs and working at Household Solutions building cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that I get the opportunity to continue being a part of the CMC family. Thank you guys. Yeah, Paul. We appreciate you guys sitting and listening. I know that, that it's, it's long, but we feel like it's really important for our interns to be able to communicate their heart and their thankfulness. Didn't everybody do a good job? So proud of these guys. So we're gonna take a five minute intermission, let you go to the restroom, because I know many of you do, and then we're gonna come back and we'll conclude our, our time here together. Thank you. Well, first off, I want to say congratulations to all of you. I mean, what a, an accomplishment, you know, that you pulled off. Number one, you're one of the few classes that have started and finished with the same people that you started with. Yeah. It's, it's not easy to... Um, do what we do here. You know, I hear a lot of adults say, man, I, I would like to go there. And I go, no, you wouldn't. Because <laughs> you couldn't do it. You, you just couldn't do it. Because it, it's not easy. And normally we do lose several along the way. But I remember you guys saying at the very beginning, you know, it was like everybody put their pinky in and said, we're not losing one person. And everybody made it to the end. <clears throat> Maybe a couple I should have let go, but... Well, I, I um, have the privilege of giving you a charge and I'm going to be brief. I'm not going to be long because you've heard all of us talk for many, many, many hours since you've been here. Um, but I do want to say uh, you all committed to start and finish this internship and now you have finished what you committed to start. And that's an awesome thing. I think it's a very important thing in life to be able to set a goal, to give yourself to that process, and then be willing to do all the hard work that gets you there. And um, I, I have a name for moments like this. It's what I call destiny moments. Now, they're rare for many people. A lot of people, they never experience them, they, they tend to elude them. But moments like this are just 
amazing, aren't they? They feel really, really good. I'm talking like in the deepest recesses of your soul. They're sweet, they're awesome, they're incredible. They, they give meaning to life. They give meaning to life. And, and along the way of getting here, there was a lot of seemingly menial and meaningless things that you had to do to arrive at this point, right? But once again, it was all worth it now that you're sitting in these seats on this stage and you are feeling the emotions that you're feeling in your heart. It, it's just, well, you can't describe it. You can't describe it. And, and really, it's, I always kind of liken it to um, like a football game. People in the stands, when their team makes the touchdown, it's just an awesome thing. Fans cheer, they stand up. It's just the greatest moment. But it is nothing compared to the guy who made the touchdown, right? And you made the touchdown. We're all thrilled for you. But really, the only people that can really know exactly what you're feeling right now are the ones that have gone before you. You know, the alumni that are here that are supporting you, they know what that experience is like. There are a handful of people in this room, including myself and my wife, who many years ago when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, we came through this program. We know what it feels like, but this, this is a moment. This is what I call a destiny moment. But I, I want you to make an important observation because this moment didn't accidentally happen to you. It's not like a pecan fell out of a tree and hit you in the head. It was intentional. It was an intentional moment. Luck was not factored in this destiny moment that you're having right now. No, this moment and all the emotions that are tied to this moment is a result of a, of a nine-month journey that began Let's think back, September 2021, when you pulled up on the parking lot as nervous as you could possibly be and had no idea what you were getting yourself into. For you to be in the position that you're in today, receiving honor from your peers, getting respect from your leadership, seeing God be so proud of you is all of is a result of a lot of intentionality, a lot of hard work, a lot of staying focused, a lot of not getting distracted. You know, and a lot of people, they, they want these moments. They want these moments. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that wouldn't want to have a destiny moment, a moment like this in life, or many moments like this in life. People pray for these moments, they dream of these moments, moments to grow, moments where they can be promoted, to moments of accomplishing a dream, experience some amazing milestone like you are experiencing in your life right now, but way too many people never get out of the dream state and move into the destiny moment state. They just kind of stay in the dream state, and I've just always heard it said, a dream without commitment, focus, and hard work is just fantasy. And a lot of people have fantasy. They have fantasies of a great life. They have fantasies of, of creating a life that is impactful and meaningful and purposeful and brings about change and blessing in other people's lives. But you are experiencing this moment because you operated in the qualities of hard work, diligence, focus, intentionality. That's why it happened. I mean, really, the reason that you're here is because you just didn't quit. Bottom line, we could just sum it up to the reason that you made it here, outside of God's help, obviously, and we're just taking that for granted because this is a Christian internship and that's our whole focus. 
But the reason that you made it to where you made it is because you didn't quit. You know, Tim and I, we've been working together for a very long time and being in the ministry and doing lots of conferences and seminars and meeting lots and lots, I mean, literally thousands of people, thousands of people we've met together. And, you know, we watch a lot of people start things. It's kind of easy to start things. You know, you have the initial enthusiasm of getting going and it's all exciting. There's the emotions and, you know, you're thinking about what could be and what might happen and all of these things. And lots of people start things in life, but, but finishing is difficult. You know, you guys can think of so many lectures that you've had, whether it be from me or, or Josh or Lucas or the Birminghams or many, many, many other people who have spoken into your life since you've been here. And you get inspiration from all of those people, but ultimately, really, it's up to you. It's up to you in life. It's not up to your parents. It's not up to your pastor. It's not up to your boss. It's not up to your leaders. It's really, ultimately, it boils down to the fact it's you. You are experiencing this moment because you didn't quit. You persevered. And finishing is something that is not easy. It's not easy. You know, we talk about in Old Testament how it was one thing for them to go in and be delivered, but it was another thing for them to live delivered. That takes intentionality. That takes work. It takes maintaining your life. Having a dream is one thing, but visioneering a dream into a reality is something altogether different. You are here because you have proven that you are able to finish what you commit to. Many of you started at the very beginning kind of unsure of what this journey looked like, but there was one thing that you had in your mind. None of you started this with the intention of quitting. You started it with the intention of finishing, and now here you are finishing. You're finishers. Each one of you that are sitting here are finishers. And milestones in life are achieved by people who are determined to finish. You know, I just really admire people who don't quit. And that was a quality that I wanted to have in my life. I watched a lot of people quit. I've seen lots of people start things in my lifetime. Had people quit on me in a lot of areas of my life. But the people that influenced me the most in life were the people who just didn't quit. The people who stuck it out and did what they said they were going to do. They were determined. Didn't matter what kind of forces came against them. Didn't matter what kind of opposition that they faced. It didn't really matter how difficult it became. They were determined that they were going to quit. And people quit for a lot of different reasons, not just because it gets hard. People quit because they get bored. And I've watched that happen lots. They quit because they get distracted. They quit because they lose focus on their goal. You know, your adversary, our adversary, the devil, his whole job is to tempt, to tempt. Even with Jesus, when he was in the wilderness for 40 days, he tempted Jesus to quit. He wanted Jesus to fail, but Jesus didn't fail. Jesus succeeded, and because of his success, now we are able to be successful ourselves. The devil tempted Jesus. And if he tempted Jesus, he will certainly tempt you. You had temptations throughout your nine months here to quit. But I just want you to know there's going to be a lot of other temptations that are going to come along in life, along life's way, where you will be tempted to quit. Quit this job for a more understanding boss. Quit this church for a better one. Quit this friendship for one that's more meaningful or one that's more fun. Quit this mate for a better looking one or a younger one. The list goes on and on. 
See, many people develop a habit of quitting. And it's easy to develop a habit of quitting because once you start quitting, it's just that much easier next time to fall into line. But destiny moments, destiny moments like what you are experiencing right now and the pride that I have in my heart over each one of you only happens because you did not quit. And you know, here's the thing, guys. Just like you can develop a habit of quitting, you've, you've learned that you can develop a habit of finishing. Finishing everything that you start. The path most traveled is most traveled for a reason. In the moment, quitting will always seem like the best path to take. It's tempting. It's always going to seem like it is the easiest path to take. And I will admit, it's hard to arrive at this place. You know, you, you guys, it, it wasn't easy for you to be on this stage. A lot of these guys don't understand what you've had to work through and work for and work toward, but you do, and it wasn't easy for you to get here. But destiny moments require grit. They require hard work and they require commitment. In Matthew chapter seven, it says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by in it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few that find it. Like I said, back in September, you chose to take a path less traveled. You know, you were probably misunderstood by a lot of your friends and your peers and family members. You know, your friends were like, you're going where? In the middle of what? Why? Because that's not the norm. You did something that was not normal to culture. You didn't get a job right out of high school. You didn't go to college right out of high school. You chose to come to a GAP program. And a lot of people don't even know what a GAP program is. You say GAP program, I tell people GAP program, and they look at me, and, what? You know, what are you talking about? They don't understand the, the significance of what can happen in your life at a GAP program. But you kept your focus. You didn't let that deter you. And from that moment until now, look where you've ended up. You've arrived at your destiny moment. And I want to encourage you, soak it up, because it's awesome. It's an amazing feeling. Look around the room. These people, they've come to support you. There's a lot of people that are really, really proud of you. But I've got some good news for you today. <clears throat> this is just the beginning. This is just the launching pad for many, many destiny moments that God has predestined for you to experience in your lifetime. <clears throat> and here's the good thing. Not only have you arrived at this one, you know what it takes to get to the next one because you've already done it. So that's a building block of faith for you to stand upon knowing that if I did this, I can do the next hard thing that God has for me and I can do the next hard thing and I can overcome the next hard thing. See, these past nine months, you've been equipped by the Lord. And as in my time here with you, I wanna leave you with a simple charge and it's just a scripture from the Bible, just a simple scripture from the Bible that will sum up really everything that I want to say to you. And it's one that has really encapsulated my life in so many ways. Galatians chapter six, verse nine. And let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season, we shall reap a reward if we do not lose heart. Let us not grow weary in doing good. Don't grow weary in doing good. And here's why, because God is a rewarder to people who will remain faithful. You will receive rewards in this life, just like you are receiving now, and you will receive many, many more rewards in the life to come. That's it. It's that simple. Never quit. Ever ever, never, ever, ever, ever quit. How many times have y'all heard me say that to you? <clears throat> I have a picture framed in my office 
we meet in my office quite often for classes and the interns always get to look at the saying that I have framed on the wall in my office by one of my favorite movie characters, Rocky Balboa. And I always meditate on the quote and go over it and over it in my mind, especially when I faced hard things. And so I wanna share this with you one more time as I end my time here with you. So you just picture Rocky in the movie saying what he's saying, right? because he says it a lot better than me because I can't talk like that, right? <laughs> so let me tell you something that you already know. This world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and it will keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit you as hard as life but it ain't about how hard you hit it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward how much you can take and keep moving forward see that's how winning is done now if you know what you're worth then go out and get what you're worth but you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers, saying it ain't you where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. See, cowards do that, and that ain't you. You're better than that. Man, what advice. What advice for life, right? Being people who are determined that they just simply aren't going to quit. And the thing about it is, guys, you'll always arrive at your destiny moment if you'll have that attitude. See, it's not about talent. It's not about ability. It's not about brains or, or any of that. It's just about determination, that you are determined that you and God are going to partner together hand in hand. And you're going to hear God say to you at the end of your life, well done, good, and what? Faithful servant. Enter in to the joy that I have prepared for you. I want to brag on you. I want to hug on you. I want to love on you. And I honestly don't want to let you go, but I know God is going to use you to do some really awesome things in this life. I'm excited about the ones that are staying the ones that are leaving, you always know that you can come back and see us anytime. Well, when my house gets finished, you can come back and see us anytime. I, I don't have room for me and my wife barely right now. But when it's done, you can come back and see us anytime. We love you guys. We are so proud of you. Congratulations on a job well done. Amen? Amen. All right, you guys can go take a seat. So we have an end of the year video that we're gonna be playing and I wanted them to be able to not watch it on these small screens up here on the stage, but be able to see it on a big screen.
I'd say the, the most fun I have here is when we have our spontaneous, crazy ADHD moments in the kitchen. What would you say was one of your most fun memories at Leaders Academy? Janessa went crazy and she was screaming at David and Dante and then I decided to tape Savannah's phone on the wall because she was going to leave or something. So I was like, no, we can't get her to leave. When we had our snow day and Paul decided to have class and we were all like, oh, it's fine because <laughs> our class building is right there. There's still ice on the ground, right? So we all walk out and Danny just eats it. And then we have interns just sliding down the hill. Apparently, I didn't know this about myself, but I sleep talk. I was sleeping one night and Victoria walked in. She was using her flashlight to look around and I apparently just sat up in bed asleep and was like, are you taking a picture of me? <laughs> and then she was like, <laughs> One time we went to the beach, we threw frisbees, and then we did spike ball and just hung out and it was really cool. It's really a wholesome time. When we had Quest, a more upbeat song started playing and I just look around and all the interns, all the kids are just jumping up and dancing and singing, having a dance party with Jesus and it was the best thing ever to just see the joy of the Lord. I just remember feeling so happy and knowing like, okay, I'm doing this with these people who I love so much. Our RA, Colton, walked down the kitchen and he had a mattress. And I just start jumping into it, hitting it and bouncing off. One more. And I said, okay, one more. And I don't know why I agreed to it. I backed up, I was like, this one's gonna be big. I'm trying to knock knock him over. Try to jump into it and Colton just swerves right out of the way. And I hit our hard concrete floor. And then I slide into our chairs and tables. Paul canceled all of our classes for a day and took us to hike a mountain. And when we got to the top, I thought I was gonna fall off because it's a lot skinnier on the top of the mountain than you think. We were just sitting there on the rocks and Paul was telling us this amazing story, but the whole time I was looking down at the ground and I was like, if I fell right now, it was very fun. <laughs> we decided to take a bro day, so we got our canoe, went two miles out, uh, got there, hiked around a little bit, swam some, and found a 15 foot tall cliff to jump off of. I had never done it before. And so my first time I completely belly flopped and it felt like I had been hit by a truck. When I first got here, I would wear my hair curly all the time. And so people would assume that I was black. And I was like, you know what, maybe I should go along with this as a joke. And so I started playing around and be like, yeah, I'm black, my dad's black, but he's from Mexico. <laughs> so, and so um, I think a whole six months, even probably till now, people don't know what I am, but I'm actually Mexican. <laughs> We were driving, we passed this dead possum on the road. It hits me, possums play dead. I park and then Renee tries to throw a stick at the possum. She misses by a mile, we're dying of laughter. So I back up, we're getting ready, boom. I back into a mailbox and he was super kind and he called me and he was like, don't even worry about it. He said, honesty is rare these days. I think that bonded Renee and I in a very special way. It was so funny. Valentine's dance. It was an amazing event. And I got Chloe. My mind was like, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna dress up as a king. So I dressed up. Glenn hit a sneaker in the kitchen and it was like, play One Direction. You don't know you're beautiful. <laughs> and I walked in there. I kneeled down. I was like, Chloe, will you marry me? <laughs> she said no, but she didn't want to go to dance with me. So like, it still worked out. <laughs> the boat race and we're rowing we're rowing we look over and Dante and Chloe are booking it so I'm like these people should be in the Olympics and I'm on the verge of tears our team is like freaking out and I look over and Dante and Chloe are like spinning towards the dog it was the funniest thing ever we're going and you've never seen my face so determined we're going we're going and like we're winning we're beating them and I get off and I'm like whoa did we just win and Rhett came up to me and he hugged me and was like you just beat Dante that was the best accomplishment ever. One of the first few weeks we got here, we watched a USC fight. Josh Barnett, Colton, Austin, a bunch of people were there. And this is one of the first times that Natalie and I were rooting for different people. Now, little did we know this was going to be the greatest fight of 2021. It was so crazy. We were all jumping up and down, yelling at the TV. And the best part of it all, the guy that I was rooting for won in the end. It was so much fun. Me and Carly decided that we were going to go buy a fish. So we go to the pet store. He was blue and he's really pretty and he was male and we named him Enrique Swim Shady Miguez Wilson. 
Obviously, that's what you name a fish. I think we had him about a week. I get back from class, Carly's crying, and like the dorms are like a mess, and like what's happening, Enrique had passed away. And we still have the fish tank. We went out to Benton. We were gonna go bowling. Well, it was closed when we got there. So we decided, oh, let's go ice skating. Well, we were driving with, um, Somebody. We made, you know, 50 wrong turns. There's cops going everywhere. We hit a turn, we almost miss it. We like slam all the way. Danny's like going everywhere. And we finally get to the ice skating rink. Now we have fun and it's just an awesome time. Definitely one of my favorite memories. Super Bowl. I'm a big sports fan, so your girl loves them. I was pro. I don't even know what team was I going for. What team was I going for? I don't know, but it was anti rec That's all it was. <laughs> I don't even know what team I was going for. <laughs> We're like hyping this up. All the interns are in the kitchen. My homie, Red, he's going for the opposite team. He was winning almost the entire game. He was going like all up in my face. Your girl was calm. And then, fourth quarter, my team started winning, and then I won in the end. I'm usually a pretty good winner. I take the L or I take the W, but today, no, 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 baby. <laughs> Danny brought a snake into the student center. She just found a little guard snake and she wanted to bring it in and show everybody. And Lucas like freaked out. I can't describe what happened. <laughs> it was just so funny. The way he looked at it and he was just like twitching. He was like, he was like, get away, get away. <laughs> it was just so funny. So we made we made a video in the very uh -huh. beginning of the year. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna get you to watch it back. <laughs> Leaders Academy helps because we can see the importance oh, yeah. of community. It's helped me to realize how important it is for me to grow up as a man and lead my family. Are you glad you went to Leaders Academy? Yes, it's only been a week and a half, but it oh has been gosh. a very, very good decision and I've already grown it's so crazy. much. We're only a week and a half into this program and I've already seen such a huge change in, in myself and the habits that I have and in the people around me. I think it's really cool that we're going right now to start our day with 30 minutes of prayer and then we're going to all go work out together. Lord, what can I say? You show me endless Oh, I'm such a baby. <laughs> The thing that stands out to me the most is I think my, the insecurity I carried and like the grace that's been showed to, shown to me in so many ways. All the leaders just being so awesome and pushing us. Obviously Paul, you know, me having talks with him and just that being super healing. I, I feel like I've come so far. I don't recognize the person I was. So being in an environment where people call me out of that in an encouraging way, showing me a better way to think, it's been amazing. Because I had no idea what was ahead, like no idea of all the memories that I was going to make, all of the things that God was going to work in my life that I didn't even expect Him to do. Classes like Management of Life, where I've learned to manage time, learn how to manage money, learn how to manage my emotions. That's a huge one for me because I didn't know how to manage my emotions. Wherever God would send me, I know that it's going to be successful by the knowledge and the uh, growth that I've experienced since I've been here. There's also been so much breakthrough and so much transformation in my heart that I had no clue needed to happen and I had no idea any of it was there because you're not going to get that anywhere else. You don't ever spend nine months getting closer to the Lord and really like learning and growing in such a concentrated way. It just sets you years ahead in the way that you would have grown just because it's so intense and it's hard because it's so intense but at the same time it's that's where breakthrough comes. insane what the Lord has used this church and these people to do in my life, so. Yeah,